Welcome to our short summary on requirements engineering. My name is Christoph Ebert and I will give you an overview what is requirements engineering, why we need it. Requirements engineering is important. You might all know that requirements cause a lot of rework. 10 to 30 percent of the overall project budget can be saved with a good requirements engineering. Why is it? Think about late requirements, think about requirements changes, misunderstandings. All that creates rework. If we have a good planning based on good estimation and documented requirements, we can reduce this. Think about product liability. If there is a change which causes a problem later on in the field, this is a lot of extra cost. So I will explain you what we do with requirements engineering. And this means that we have to look into what is a disciplined requirements engineering. We need to think in terms of six activities which together mean a systematic and disciplined requirements engineering. That is elicitation, documentation, analysis, validation, negotiation and management. We put them in a certain order, not because they follow in sequence, but more to see what kind of relationships there are. We start with eliciting requirements. To elicit a requirement means that we really think in terms of value. Requirements are not collected. They are not just taken out of specifications. We need interaction with users, with the customer, to identify what is the value. There are different approaches, such as the Kano model, which helps us to focus on the high-value requirements. But if we only go for base requirements, then we have a lot of work, but no tangible value. With the elicitation of requirements, we of course also specify and document the requirements. Documentation gives visibility, it allows traceability, and above all, it's a baseline. Our vector recommendation here is to use a standard template, make sure that you have traceability links into test cases, such as qualification tests, or into architecture modeling design decisions. It's also important that our template has specific fields which allow us to record what is the source of the requirements, what is the estimated effort, etc. Speaking about effort, we come to the third activity, that is analysis. Analysis is about understanding the impact. We typically use modeling techniques such as UML or SysML. And it is also about understanding what is the effort to implement that requirements. With documentation and analysis, we have a baseline of the requirements. We, of course, have to ensure quality. This is where validation comes into the picture. Validation is about ensuring the right quality level. We do reviews of requirements and we make sure that requirements are testable. This is what we call in Vector Test-Oriented Requirements Engineering or T-O-R-E. With this baseline, we need to ensure that we are all in the same sheet. This is negotiation. We have to allocate requirements to an increment, to a delivery, to a project, make sure we have the budget and make sure that we have the right priority setting. With this baseline, we can start the project. However, requirements change, and that is why we need management of requirements. In Vector, we know that about one to three percent of the requirements are changing seen over the budget of a project. With this change rate, we have to make sure that we know exactly how to keep artifacts consistent. Traceability helps us here, and then we see that in the management of requirements we provide visibility, progress and ensure change management. With these six activities you have a good foundation for requirements engineering, independent whether it's classic or agile. And I wish you good luck and of course we are available for any further information at vector.com consulting. Thank you very much.